Yep, that's what we want. So not only is this tree already dead, but it started to dry. And although it has rained because it's off the ground, the air is going to wick away the moisture pretty quickly, which is going to prevent rot for a decent amount of time. Eventually this would rot, but I think we have a lot of salvageable wood here. And I'm going to double check that with a knife and I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to pick pretty much any spot along the tree. It can be top or bottom and I'm just going to scrape away the bark until I get to the most outer wood. And already, uh, this knife is somewhat sharp and it's not just slicing in there real easily, which is a good sign. All right, so here's what we're looking at. Uh, this isn't as good of a tree as I thought it was gonna be, but you'll also see this channel of sawdust right here that is not a very good sign i'm not going to pretend that i know what i'm talking about i'd say maybe it's termites or some type of wood either way whatever it is it's not good um so i don't know i'm going to check another part of the tree to boost my confidence this looks a lot better we got good strong wood underneath it and i'm not seeing any bug holes any type of mold or rot i don't know what that is but i'm not real worried about it so i'm gonna go ahead and chop off a section of this and see what i'm looking at I i'm gonna try to pick a section that doesn't have a whole lot of knots or irregularities and I'm going to cut from the underside up because if I were to cut from the top side down the wood would pinch my blade because it wants to fall down so where I'm cutting in between my two fists would come together and bind the blade whereas if I cut from the bottom it already wants to fall down so that's just going to open up the cut for me. You know what I said about cutting from the bottom? I don't actually know. That, that's not working right now. I'm just gonna cut from the top and see what happens. Come on. Right. So except for right in the middle, we're looking good at this piece. Also, pro tip, don't bring out one of these folding saws thinking it'll be cute because it fits in your backpack. Just get a regular saw. You guys remember when I knew what I was doing? Yeah, me neither. I ended up ditching that log that you just saw me working with because I didn't like it and I got a new one. I repeated the same process and now I'm going to try to get a usable piece of wood out of this log. Now that I have a rough plank of wood, I'm going to plane it down, make it a little bit smoother, and then I'll draw in my design for the spatula. Now 
I'm using a bandsaw because I have one. If you don't have one, a coping saw does the same job. It'll just take a little bit longer. Next, I'm going to refine the shape with a good sharp carving knife and then we'll move on to sanding. Now, I'm never going to tell anyone to use this technique, but I used it to thin out my spatula and I didn't hurt myself, which is really the most important part. If you do decide to do this, be careful because you can very easily shave off half your palm. Once that was done, I took it over to the belt sander and I used a worn down 40 grit belt to refine the bevels and then I started hand sanding the entire thing. I went from about 120 up to 500 grit sandpaper and around the 220 and 500 grit mark, I started to bring out the grain, and that's the process where you rub a little bit of water all over your workpiece. The wood soaks up the water, it expands, it dries expanded, and now your workpiece is really rough. You sand down all those rough patches, repeat the process a few more times, and you're left with a really, really smooth piece of work, and that's what you're looking at right here. Then I branded the blade of the spatula with my little cowboy boot brand and I polished it up. Then I decided to hit the blade of the spatula with a blowtorch and on the outside it darkened the grain which made it look nice but I also thought that maybe I, it would fire harden it or something where whenever you heat up wood it contracts and it's a little bit stronger, a little bit stiffer. I don't actually know if that happened, but I like the way that it turned out. For the finish, I uh, just ran some olive oil all over the spatula because I know it's food safe and I had it. If I had mineral oil, I'd probably go with that, but I didn't. This is what I went with. I don't know how long it'll last, but only time will tell. So thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video.